expected some pretty easy some pretty easy cash against that big spike in the selling some pretty interesting selling opportunities we didn't run the stops we didn't get the top edge we didn't manage to make any money off that uh, high price but obviously that's okay that's uh, sometimes what happens uh, but i still managed to get a stop in at break even i was still able to take some profits off the trade and i don't really care anything else uh, whatever happens next happens next that's not my control my control is to get the trade on and not lose any money on it so welcome in guys i hope you're all good this morning We've covered a lot of technical stuff today, not a lot of uh, macro kind of ideas, but a lot of technical trade entry kind of type stuff, uh, crack spreads and oil, uh, bond trades. I hope it makes a, a bit of sense. Um, but in terms of uh, numbers this morning, there was, a, there was there's, there's kind of in and out of numbers, isn't there? The, the overnight session, we had the, the uh, we, we tweeted out last night that we were expecting a bit of a pushback on the taper conversation uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, the Kiwis and the, uh, the, the Aussies, and, and, and that's what happened. We did get a pushback, obviously, by the RBNZ when the forecast, the original forecast, had been for a, a, an increase of 25 basis points on the rates, and the RBNZ obviously actually pushed back against that and left the rates on hold at 25 basis points. So when we understood that that was the case, we're obviously aware that the market had already pretty much priced this. And if you remember yesterday, I suggested that you might want to try and buy some low priced Aussies. And the reason why you might want to buy some low priced Aussies is because, you know, the Aussie kickback against those stories has already taken place. It's already taken place, guys. That kickback has already been priced into the market. And as a result, we're not telling you something that the market's not already traded. So therefore, the opportunity was to maybe sell some, uh, so buy some Aussie dollar, which I've been doing at the bottom edges. I bought some Aussie dollar into the 7240 area, and it's 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 risen subsequently to 70s, and then it came back down into the 40s, and we started to buy again. It's went back up to the 55, 60 area, and I quite like that story, bearing in mind that commodity prices are still quite elevated against that as a process, against that as a process. Uh, let's take a look at what happened to that oil trade. Here we go, guys. Another winning trade. I, I, we just talked about it a second ago. You can see that that short oil trade that we took off that 20 price area, that 19s, it's just dropped down to 10s. You can see that we made some really nice gains on that. Very easy money trade. Very easy money trade. And um, you can see, obviously, that that was all based on a little bit of liquidity. It, we didn't get stops, but we got the liquidity. And we took advantage of that and we made another easy money sell trade, another big profit for anybody that understands what we're talking about here. Peak supply, peak demand, guys. It's crystal clear in your screens. Crystal, crystal clear in your screens. But it's only going to become crystal clear if you use it, if you recognize divergence. It's only going to be crystal clear on the time frame of reference which you've also got to make sure you understand. And that's something we touched on. It's something we'll touch on again this afternoon in classroom. So welcome, guys. As far as other news is concerned, the RBNZ uh, leaving rates on hold as expected, as expected. Remember, the original forecast was that the RBNZ and the RBA were both going to be starting to uh, ramp up the uh, tapering process, starting to raise rates and starting to withdraw QE. There's, uh, you know, there's always that debate about which should go first, an increase in rates and keep the money going, or a decrease in the money and then an increase in rates. That's always that discussion about which one you drop off first. But obviously the RBNZ have left the easy money because they had a, they had a case, guys, in, in, in New Zealand. They had a coronavirus case. In fact, it's now like five cases. So that's something you've got to bear in mind that that's the reason why they had this uh, full economy lockdown. It's because they had a case. Um, moving into the London session, we had a bit of give with one hand and take back with the other. PPI numbers came in firmer than expected. RPI numbers came in firmer than expected. However, CPI numbers actually dropped off on a year-on-year -year basis. CPI numbers dropped from a forecast of 2.3 down to 2%. Transitory inflation, perhaps, perhaps the idea of um, uh, the uh, the idea of of uh, the way that the calculations are made, input prices uh, against output prices. You know, the cost of input coming in at 0.8%, not being passed on to the public, the CPI number outputs coming in at 
as opposed to 2.3%. So perhaps a little bit of a squeeze on profit margins by uh, the commercials. Perhaps a little bit of a squeeze. As we moved into the European CPI numbers, they did come in in line with expectation at 2.2%. Final core numbers came in line with expectations at 0.7. These are final CPI, remember. And because they're final numbers, you normally don't expect any any difference because they've already factored in most of the they've already factored in most of the trade, right? They've already factored that storyline in. And oil's doing well, guys. Um, dare I ask if anybody decided to join me on the short oil? I hope so. I hope so. I like to see you guys making a lot of money. Um, but there's the there's a trade now, guys. There's the trade now. We've uh, gone to $2,300 on that 10 lot. You can see we're basically just watching it dropping off the uh, cliff face here. We went from 20s down to 95s now. It's a good looking trade. It's a nice looking trade and it had a peak demand storyline. Exactly as we taught in classroom, didn't it? It was exactly as we taught in classroom here. Peak demand, oil sells. Peak demand, oil sells. So when we get into that storyline of peak demand and oil selling, bada bum, bada bing, big bada boom, guys, right? Big bada boom. It's not surprising anymore, does it? It doesn't catch you by surprise. It's expected. Who bought some bonds with me? Who bought some bonds with me off the 20s? Because they were all tied together. That storyline was tied together, wasn't it? So when we looked at that peak supply demand storyline and we looked at the bond storyline and we started to ask the question, well, we got the sell on oil, but what about that bond? What about the bond? Do you think we'd obviously miss a bond buying opportunity? So there was the bond buy at the low price, another $2,500. Total profit, guys, $5,000 profit. $5,000 profit, total profit, guys. Difficult to make some monies? Taking some profits at 24s in the bond, stops are at break even. Beautiful, done. So you can see that we did both of these trades. We sold the oil at the highs, and in line with selling the oil at the highs, we bought the bonds at the lows, and we've made Pretty good money for a small, smallish retail trade. I know it's 16 contracts and 10 contracts is perhaps beyond most people. But then if you look at it from a single contract basis, that's $200 plus, that'd be $200 nearly. $150. That's 350 bucks, guys, in those two trades on a single contract. I know that they're doubling your alpha on that. You're doubling your exposure on it. But... Um, you can see that this is what we do. This is why we constantly make lots of lots of lots of cash because we're always actively pursuing these. And, and I'm running classrooms, remember, at the same time as putting these trades on so that we can show you these ideas. You know, if I can do that in, in the classroom at the same time as, as showing you the ideas and putting trades on and putting stops into break even and Ninja Trader and all that kind of stuff, you guys can do these trades. You, can, you guys can do these trades. Now, one of the things we talked about about oil, and you can see how nicely that trade has been. We were talking about putting the oil price, the candles into the middle, the orange line at the top, the blue line at the bottom. We achieved that because the blue line dropped down here, didn't it? That was the sell on oil. Is it a macro sell? Or is it a micro sell? Is it a scalp sell? Or is it a micro sell? Well, this chart doesn't tell us that, does it? It doesn't tell us. We've got to zoom out a little bit and start to get some ideas about the macro storyline. If you look at the macro storyline on a daily basis, you can see that this is a scalp trade. It's a pretty good scalp trade, isn't it? It's a pretty damn good scalp trade, by, in, in my opinion, but it is a scalp trade. So I want to get stops at break even. I want to get stops at break even. I want to get the deal done. How is oil in the middle? When I'm looking at this as a scalp trade and I zoom in, oil's not in the middle, the skew's in the middle. Oil can't be in the middle, oil's got to be on the outside. The blue line is the oil line. The blue line is the oil line. I need to get the oil on the outside 
against the candles in the orange line here. So the blue line's on the outside, isn't it? If I go along to the right-hand edge of that chart, do you agree that the blue line is at the bottom edge, the candles are off the bottom edge, and the orange line is into a high price? Yep, it's in the middle. It doesn't need to be bang in the middle, if that's what you mean. You know, the candles don't need to be, for example, up here. The higher the candles are, the better the clarity is, but they don't need to be there. And the reason why the higher the candles, the better the clarity is very obvious, because if you get a down candle, it doesn't take you out of the trade. But as, so, long as the, so long as the order's right, so long as the traffic light order is correct, we could be in good condition, right? And the traffic light order is, can, is, is candles in the, in the middle of the three lines, right? It doesn't have to be physically in the middle, but in the middle of the three lines. Blue line at the bottom, orange line at the top, if we're going to sell oil, if we're going to sell oil into that storyline. And, um, and that's what's happened. And that's what's happened, guys. That bond's turned into a bat, an absolute cracker. Phil, you're on board, yeah? You said you're on board that one? You'll be happy with that bit of trade, won't you? My goodness, guys. We're starting to rank, wrap up some, uh, some, some, pretty good, uh, some pretty good gains. Who else has done some nice business there, guys? Who else has managed to pick up some business? You can see that we've now done some pretty impressive uh, upside here. We've got $2,600 now on, on 10, con uh, 11, uh, 10 contracts. I've taken six contracts off. So we've now got $2,900 just on 10 contracts. I've already booked six contracts on that. And that gives us a very, very nice bit of profit now on this, uh, on this bond ramp up here, doesn't it? Very nice profit in that trade. Brilliant trade outcome, considering it's a scalp. A scalp. Beautiful. Nice way to make a living, boys. Nice way to, way to, nice way to make a living. We'll cover these points and more in today's classrooms, guys. Lots of stuff covered. In today's, uh, in today's morning London session, we, we went through a lot of stuff. So apologies to all the guys that I took away from trade opportunities, but hopefully you've taken some trades because of the classroom and you've managed to learn a little bit of stuff. Um, this afternoon, what have we got? We have some numbers. We've got the Canadian CPI numbers, the next inflation numbers at 0.3% forecast, common CPI number at 1.8, the median at 2.4 and the trimmed at 2.5. They're pretty much in line with the priors. The building permits in the US comes out at the same time, 1.61, slightly higher. Housing starts, however, slightly lower. Um, this afternoon, we've got the main crude oil inventory numbers, forecast of a draw of 1.5 million headline against crude inventories, minus 1.5 million draw. And uh, we're obviously uh, very focused on the fact that there is a Fed minutes uh, outcome this afternoon at seven o'clock. It's not the Fed meeting, it's the minutes of the meeting, guys. So uh, sometimes the minutes can throw a couple, of, uh, a couple of interesting spanners into the works when people have thought that this is what's happened, but turns out that that's not what's happened. So the minutes are interesting. They're not as, as interesting as the Fed meeting, but they're still interesting nonetheless to see the detail behind the headlines. And that's all we've got for today's session. Nothing really particularly market moving for the US markets. Crude oil inventories, obviously, for the oil markets at half past three and the seven o'clock FOMC meeting uh, minutes. And uh, that's at seven o'clock. And that's something that we can pay attention to as bond traders, perhaps even equity traders might take a bit of an interest in those ones. So welcome in guys, I hope you're all good this morning. We're gonna cover a lot this afternoon in the classroom. We'll go back over the two elements that we've talked about today again. And um, we'll make sure you guys are covered for that. Make sure you guys are covered.